Joining us on the broadcast, our very special guest this morning, Georgina Kramer, who is a planetary scientist at the Planetary Science Institute, is joining us. Also with us is Ramesh Kapoor, astrophysicist, joining us from Bengaluru. Coming to you first, uh, uh, Georgina, this is a moment that the entire world has been closely waiting for the last few hours, momentous to say the least. Describe to us uh, how the entire world has been looking forward to the progress that's been made so far by the Chandrayaan-2 mission and how uh, the very fact that India has come this far is an achievement in itself. Um, Chandrayaan-1 was an amazing achievement and um, Chandrayaan-2 is, is also another amazing example of quite an achievement. The fact that um, the lander was supposed to be landing near the South Pole um, was was ambitious, and it would have been amazing. And um, the fact that it got as close as it did is um, is astounding. And um, it was only in the the last two kilometers that something went wrong. So this uh, this is actually a, a great accomplishment. A great accomplishment indeed. And as the prime minister also said. This is just a minor hiccup in the larger journey. Uh, if I can come to you uh, with that, uh, Ramesh Kapoor. Uh, this, of course, has been an extremely ambitious mission, a, a very complex one. Elaborate for our viewers why a soft landing comes with the challenges uh, that have been witnessed over the last few hours. And what we do know as of now is that the orbiter is very much doing the rounds, and that in itself... Uh, is an integral part of the mission. Uh, that's very right because uh, orbiter is in place and it's uh, and the health checkups have revealed its instruments have been functioning normally, and quite soon we will hear that the data has started flowing in. So uh, so far as the orbiter is concerned, it's being tracked pro properly, and also it is uh, supposedly functioning. Now, uh, let me come to the uh, lander and rovers part. See, it, that is an attempt being made by ISRO for the first time. Although, uh, so far now, there have been soft landings only by, accomplished by only three countries, uh, USA, USSR, and China. India was to become the fourth country, and although last April, uh, Israel would have been one, but uh, there also some snag happened, and at the height of 149 meters above the ground, uh, something malfunctioned, and then this uh, uh, the beer sheet uh, crashed into this uh, moon. But in the process, uh, uh, Israel has got quite much of information and data, and from which they are uh, going to learn quite a lot. Here also, as you are telling the viewers uh, through a quote, that uh, in sciences there is never a failure. So obviously here also we must look at it in the same fashion. I believe that those 15 minutes of terror were not really 15 minutes, actually only the last two minutes, because 13 minutes everything has gone uh, fairly smoothly, and as per the, as if like a, a textbook uh, prescription. So uh, only that at the height of uh, 2.1 kilometer and certain distance from the, uh, uh, the designated uh, landing area place, uh, this communication uh, broke down, and for all you know, uh, the uh, lander may have uh, proceeded further uh, 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 with the help of its uh, navigation and guidance control system because they are working. And there is no hindrance on the way because at that height uh, there is no uh, hill, there is no ridge of a crater, and then it's still in uh, far above the ground. So only if a communication uh, snapping has taken place, uh, that doesn't really mean that uh, the the uh, our our captain and the soldier are dead. They have carried the flag uh, right down to the uh, surface of the moon. So I must I must say that we must see it as a uh, near 99 percent success so far as the mission is concerned. And in this process, uh, we are going to still learn quite a lot because ISRO is going to analyze the data, and they are they must be already at it. And uh, we'll soon hear from them uh, some uh, further than this. So it's quite difficult to uh, make a speculation at this stage, but we should look at it in a only positive manner. I see it as an op uh, optimistic person 
Uh, I don't see any negative things here. I see only the positive, uh, and certainly not down and never uh, out. Absolutely, and as the Prime Minister said, uh, ISRO is known for its never say die attitude, and that uh, lies at the very foundation of uh, the several experiments and the several achievements that the space agency has uh, uh, achieved so far. What a terrific year it's been. I want to come to you with that in just a bit. Georgina, uh, getting you in on the aspect of how, uh, as Mr. Kapoor is mentioning, uh, one of the most integral parts of the mission, the orbiter, is uh, very much in place and uh, it's being regarded as 95% of the mission. Uh, what are the findings that we can expect to derive uh, from the orbiter as it circles the moon over the next one year? Um, I, I would think that improved global mapping um, of the uh, lunar surface. Um, I'm actually, unfortunately, not familiar with all the instruments that are on board the orbiter. Hmm. Um, so, um, um, but I mean, it, we would certainly be getting um, improved data, um, um, compositional data and morphological data, which will be important for understanding the different landing sites. Um, and, and this is absolutely true, that the orbiter is a very important um, um, continuing success um, and that the fact that the lander didn't make it in those last few seconds literally um, is is nothing to um, to be sad about it it was uh, an, a, an amazing um, accomplishment that was made Mr. Kapoor would you like to elaborate on that see there are eight experiments uh, on the orbiter and they cover a wide spectrum of the electromagnetic radiation, X-rays as well as infrared and radio also. So, and there are cameras. There is a terrain mapping camera. There is a very high resolution uh, camera. And the uh, resolution there is uh, 30 centimeter. This is, uh, this is the camera whose images were supposed to have been uh, transmitted to lander uh, for uh, reference because subsequently in its flight, uh, whatever pictures its cameras were taking, they, it will be compared and then accordingly the course correction will be made. So uh, the path, a major part of the uh, its uh, descent uh, happened as per the uh, programming. Now, so far as the instruments are concerned, see, there is a certain overlap in their, uh, uh, their uh, functionality in the following sense that uh, there is a basic idea of trying to know about the surface of the moon, the insides of the moon, and the immediate exosphere of it. So, uh, Lander's instruments also, in a certain way, uh, help us uh, determine uh, those things and take measurements. Rovers also as also uh, the orbiters. So uh, uh, when it comes to scientific uh, uh, data that is uh, going to uh, accrue to us, uh, not so much is lost because here now it is a remote observer, the uh, orbiter, whereas lander and the uh, rover are experimenters because they do experiment as if the whole surface of the moon is their laboratory. So as rover is supposed to go around and then uh, using its um, alpha spectroscope and, uh, and the laser spectroscope for uh, the study of the soil and various uh, the target samples. And then there are cameras on all of them. And uh, uh, so terrain mapping is one of the important uh, things that we are supposed to uh, ha have uh, because in future missions, we should know more about the uh, surface of the moon in that area. Although this landing area is supposed to be uh, sort of hazard free in the following sense that boulders should be smaller than uh, 50 centimeter, the slope should be about less than 20, 12 degrees and there should not be any big uh, structures casting long shadows because uh, at that latitude uh, on the, uh, near the South Pole, which is about 71 degrees, the sun mm -hmm. at high noon uh, will rise only 19 degrees. So anything anywhere uh, cast long shadows and that should not fall on the lander. So all of that uh, care was taken. As an example, I'll just tell you, a one meter rod if you place at that point, right. it will cast a shadow of about uh, three meters long. So uh, you can imagine, yeah. So uh, orbiter obviously is still our uh, 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 working horse. So uh, I believe that uh, we'll hear 
uh, from ISRO very soon. Uh, any uh, further news about uh, lander and the rover? Absolutely. As we speak, uh, scientists at the Indian Space Research Organization are uh, analyzing the data that's been received and we'll, of course, keep a close eye on the leaders coming in on that front. We're going to leave it there for the moment. Georgina and Mr. Kapoor appreciate very much you joining us on the broadcast and sharing all of those perspectives and elaborating for us how this is just a minor hiccup, a minor glitch in the larger journey. And as the Prime Minister said, uh, this setback, a minor one, only uh, opening the way for new innovations and there will be a brighter tomorrow. Moving on for now to the latest coming in uh, on the Amazon rainforest fires. Seven Amazonian countries have signed a pact now to protect the world's largest tropical rainforest via disaster response coordination and satellite monitoring. It's a significant development. This after recent fires had uh, ripped through thousands of square miles of the rainforest. The presidents of Colombia, Bolivia, Ecuador, Peru, the vice president of Suriname, and the Natural Resource Minister of Guana attended that one-day-long summit in uh, Leticia in southern Colombia. The Brazilian President, Jair Bolsonaro, participated via a video link while his foreign minister attended in person. The countries will create a natural disaster network so that they can better cooperate in the face of events like large-scale fires. The group will also work on reforestation initiatives, increase efforts to monitor deforestation activity via satellites, develop educational initiatives and increase the role of indigenous communities in sustainable development. The countries also agreed to share information on activities like illegal mining that hurt conservation. Aquí estamos firmando un pacto, el Pacto de Leticia. Un pacto donde nos coordinamos, donde trabajamos armónicamente por objetivos comunes. Un pacto que nos obliga, nos compromete y nos motiva a proteger nuestra Amazonía, a hacer trabajos de prevención, de mitigación, de atención cuando tenemos riesgos o cuando se presentan además incendios forestales. Poco queda para la palabra. A partir de esta firma vamos a hacer fundamentalmente acciones, porque ninguna teoría, ninguna tesis, ninguna palabra es válida mientras no adquiere terrenalidad y sobre todo favorece a aquellos que están más necesitados. Entonces es una, una responsabilidad que también incluir a los movimientos sociales, a todos los sectores. Y, y en esta clase de problemas, el tema de los desastres naturales, el que pierde siempre, siempre es la gente más pobre, la gente más pobre.